Like, is it surreal, or are you starting to get used to it? I think it was really special for me when I won my first ever time at Madison Square Garden, and then it was also really special when uh, I won for the first time with TSM, and it felt really, really good to win with that same squad that we, well, with the exception of Bio, but we just lost the previous split against the LG. That one was in Vancouver. This one, I don't, I think it's always fun to play with the crowd, and it's especially really hype when you're in this huge venue and you make this huge play. Like when we were coming back and we just won team fight after team fight, it was just, it felt so good to hear the crowd screaming because they're just getting hyped. And this is like an unbelievable comeback. It gives you a lot of energy, I guess. Um, but yeah, I guess it's not as special in terms of the venue size. It's more just like playing at this big event. And on the flip side, you can assume that the enemy team's tilting really hard when the crowd is cheering against them. Hello. All right, uh, Jared from the Game House. My question is for uh, Biotrons, and I think there's always going to be a lot of questions about that game four because that was that was really historical. You guys come back. Um, so my question is kind of for you because I think your con really stood up for me is that that turning point, um, in particular all your macro play. Like it felt like you as a team were taking the fights that you needed to take, even though you were 10k behind. So. Um, for you, my question is, you know, how does it feel to be that kind of that playmaker in that moment? Not just that you were making a play, but you had your whole team behind you. The incident happened. Well, it, well it, was that it kind of this intrinsic synergy that you guys have built up? Is that something you've been working on? You know, your macro play looked amazing. Kind of, you know, what were the, the emotions, I should say? I think early game, we didn't play to our strengths where we were just uh, we're a comp that scales a lot, and we just took a lot of early invites, so that was part of the reason why we're down like 10k. And when we're in the mid game or like late game team fighting, it just counts down to it just comes down to Rakan getting a good engage. And even if you're like five or 10k down, if you get a good engage and insta kill someone, then you're gonna win the team fight. And in those engage timings, I didn't really think about uh, if I mess this up, we're gonna lose the game. It's just, if I don't do this right now, then we're gonna end up losing anyway. So this is the only shot we have. And if I do it, then we're gonna come back. And I think in that mid game, like mid lane team fight, where we're down like a lot and we just came back, uh, and then we started winning every team fight after that, it just felt really natural to be able to do it again and again after the first time it worked. And I think we just got into a groove after the first game that they won. Uh, this question's for Sven. Uh, the last time you were in East Asia for Worlds, uh, your participation was kind of cut short a bit. Um, do you have any uh, a message for East Asian TSM fans or East Asian uh, players or uh, consumers of League who uh, you know remember that and you know do you have anything to say uh, in the lead up to going back there uh, for Worlds? Uh, I mean I think I've matured a lot over the past three years where I've been in TSM so I'm not really concerned about anything happening because yeah I just matured a lot and uh, I guess if people are still like offended by it, then I could say sorry, but I think it's been quite a while, so I don't think, uh, at least I don't get messages anymore that people are offended by it, so I think people moved on, and yeah, I've matured a lot, so I don't think, like, it doesn't mean anything anymore. Uh, Albert for Esports Heaven here. To Hanser, what top laners do you want to play against at Worlds? Um, let's see, from Europe, I'd say, wait, I don't even know who's going to Worlds from... G2 and Misfits. Huh? G2, G2 and Misfits. Misfits. Karen Hugh. Yeah, Alfari oh. and uh, Expect. Oh, I don't think too much about them. So, <laughs> probably LZ's Khan. He has played a lot of carry tops and he's performed really well in them. He's really confident in himself and... Looks like he's the best top in LCK right now, so definitely want to play against him. Uh, SKT tops are always really solid, and they know how to play well. Um, so there's stuff that I learned from there. 
I haven't really paid attention to China as much as well, so those would be my answers. Okay, so we have time for like two more questions. Let's see. Um, this one's for Bjergsen. With the upcoming season changes to basically everything, how are you going to prepare to play differently than all of the past seasons? Uh, like all the changes for season, I don't even know what season, eight? Eight. eight? I don't know, I haven't really spent too much time thinking about that because I mean, we still have worlds to go, so I think we're going to have a long off season for me to, there's always big changes to the game, right, and there's always a certain level of adaptation, and so I don't really think it's too much different than any other year, it's just there's a bigger chance to, you know, runes, mm -hmm. masteries, and things like that, but I think I'm a player at least that's willing to try a lot of new things and potentially fail at it. And that's really going to be what Spring Split is about, is people you know, figuring out what's good and figuring out what Season 8 is about, because it's going to be such a big change that uh, initially, I feel like sometimes when there are a lot of big changes, myself and the team, we might not look the best. We usually drop games on big patches during LCS, but I know that we're a team that consistently works hard, so no matter what the changes are, eventually we'll figure them out and we'll be the best again. Uh, this question is for Bjergsen. Uh, TSM has always been the biggest brand in North America, to the point where at the Immortals fan meet yesterday, when they entered, there were TSM chants. Uh, I'm just wondering if there's ever a point where, you know, the fan attention, the chants, does that ever become overwhelming, or do you get burned out on that fan attention and acclaim? Not at all. I think playing on this big stage, especially in this round stage that Riot has now, it feels awesome because there's fans kind of all around us. No matter where I look, I hear chants, I hear people yelling, and like Peter said, it only gives me energy when I come out or I hear them during the game or when these crazy team fights. There's no point where that's ever really a negative to me. Of course, I don't want fans to be kind of bashing on our opponents and putting them down. I would rather have them hype us up, but I feel like that is what the fans do. They give us a lot of energy and they hype us up. And yeah, I'm just really grateful that we have so many fans pretty much everywhere right, right, around the world. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Let's uh, take some photos of that trophy and uh, 